as you might gather, we're going to um, listen to the Gospel of Matthew this morning about this event. Reading from chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born the king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where this Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it's been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among your people. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men, excuse me, then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring word to me, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gold and frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another route. Here is the words of the Lord. I begin this morning with our journey into your epiphanies. I'd like to share with you a uh, poem written uh, about three years ago by a colleague, Reverend Jan Richardson. Uh, It's called, Where the Map Begins. This is not any map you know. Forget longitude, forget latitude. Do not think distances or plotting the most direct route. Sextant or compass, these will not help you here. This map begins with a star. This is the chart that starts with fire, with blazing, with ancient light that has outlasted generations, empires, cultures, and wars. Look starward once, then look away. Close your eyes and see how that map begins to blossom. You cannot see it all. You can't divine the way, it will turn and spiral, and you cannot perceive how the road you walk will finally lead you inside, through the labyrinth of your own heart. But step out, and you will know what the wise who traveled this path before you knew. The treasure in this map is buried not in the journey's ending, but at the journey's very beginning. I wonder what they really saw that night. 
what, what motivated them to pack and begin a journey to a place they didn't know. Something had been revealed to them, but what? Was it in the sky? Was it in their mind? Was it in their heart? Well, we don't have much historical information about these wise folks. Some suggest they were astrologers. Some suggest that they were uh, people who really were looking at the world and in nature for guidance. This morning, we read what Matthew said about them. Number one, Matthew said they were from the east. Some speculate Persia. We like to think of them as three. But history posits that there may have been two, three, four, eight, or even 12. We like to call them Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. But those names didn't appear until the seventh century. And what about this star? It's been viewed as a regular star. The North Star burns bright, particularly in the sky. We've all seen that. You know which one it is because it's the brightest. It's also been viewed as a comet, and sometimes even by a group of planets aligning together for just a small period of time. And speaking about time, how many scenes do we see like this that appear the week before Christmas or now the day after Thanksgiving or even the day after Halloween? And that's not really the real story. I like to call it fake news because some say, historians say, it took two years for them to journey there. And certainly, as we read in Matthew this morning, they didn't run into the manger. All they would have seen there was sheep and ox. So Jesus could have been maybe two years old, maybe 18 months old. We, guess what? Plain just don't know exactly. Oh boy. So, why is this story included in the narrative of Jesus' birth? I think that the lack of historical information is very intentional. I think that it's a reminder for us, us just as it was in Reverend Richardson's poem, that this epiphany, epiphany journey isn't just a wise man's story, it's everyone's journey. The truth of scripture is never limited or contained in just the past. Huh. We don't know what happened to those people that night. I don't even know what thoughts they were thinking that made them pack and go. But I do know there have been times when perhaps each of us have experienced epiphany, times when our night sky has been lit brightly, our minds have been illumined, we call that aha. Ever had an aha moment where your brain connected and you put all of the pieces that you had no idea were related come together? Times when our hearts have been enlightened. Those times when you know something extraordinary has happened and you can't articulate it. There are no words that come out. But your heart says, oh. Those times have revealed 
to you and me a life and a world larger than it was before the light came to you. These moments have given us courage to travel beyond our borders and our own boundaries. Moments that call us, perhaps move us, to a new place. And what happens in that new place is that we see God in a new way for the first time. I think that's probably what happened to those wise men. Something stirred in them to wonder, imagine, their lives were a part of something bigger than they could explain. Perhaps the light that they saw in the stars in the sky that night was that outward sign, and it was reflected of internal divine light lighting in them at the very same moment. That same light burns within each of us. As the new year breaks open, perhaps instead of vows to lose weight, exercise more, or start to eat healthy, to save more money, to be a better friend, although those are worthy, worthy goals and ideas, how about if we start the new year by seriously considering what those ancient wise men did, no matter how many there were, they undertook a very personal journey, or they wouldn't have gone. They made seeking a different path inspired by something that changed in them to embark on an unknown path, something that was larger than themselves. And yes, indeed, after months and perhaps even years of journeying that path, they came upon a young child and his mother. And it wasn't Oh, finally, we have found it. They knew immediately upon entering that house, and they probably did fall on their knees because they knew their epiphany journey to the inspiration of the star was complete. Now, you and I may travel different roads. In fact, that's the truth. We do but the answer for us should be the same. God is continually revealing himself to you. He is continually calling you through humanity, through people. The problem is, are you, like those wise folks, willing to pursue it? willing to listen to it. And you've done it before, I know you have. Maybe it was the first grand person, the grandbaby. Maybe it was the first great grand baby. Maybe it was staring at the Grand Canyon. Maybe it was the first time you really believed your life was actually holy and acceptable to God. <laughs> Maybe it was the time when you were with someone who was dying and you were close and you could hear breath and instead of overwhelming sadness, in your heart you experienced joy that death was not the end for this person. Holy moments lighted by God in your heart. Friends, these are the stories. These are the epiphanies that you have had in your lives that forever 
have changed who you are right now. How do we live on the road we travel? Those everyday moments in life, we have a choice to look for the divine or to look for the ordinary. And where God showed us through this epiphany story is that by looking at the ordinary messengers in your life, divinity, absolutely, divinity will be revealed in your heart. And you will see God's glory face to face with the person who is the messenger for you. So here we go this January, gang. Where will your New Year journey begin? Not end, as we look and we know those folks' journey began that day when they found the king who would save all people. It did not end.